It'll gradually decelerate till it's growing about twice as fast as the S&P index. And at that rate, Bitcoin's $13 million a coin. Hello everyone, Michael Saylor speaks at the Bitcoin conference at Nashville, and his typical style delivers a fantastic speech. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Something I learned at MIT, the three laws of thermodynamics. You can't win. You can't break even, but you can't get out of the game. So you could stop right here and be a little bit depressed, but then again, we don't want to lose. So <clears throat> you start thinking, what if we could find a way out of the game? Well, then we could break even. Then you could win. Satoshi found a way. He gave it away. And he went away. And that's Bitcoin. Bitcoin is digital capital. That's what he created. Bitcoin's immortal, immutable, and immaterial capital. And I use that in this sense. It's, it's got an infinite lifespan. It's not being attacked by the forces of weather and entropy and inflation. It's immaterial in the sense that it's not in the physical world. It's not, it's not suffering from all of those parade of horribles that are the scourge of financial and physical assets. And it is the solution to our economic dilemma. The transformation of our capital from financial and physical assets to digital assets, it solves the problem that we're all facing. Now, how long lived is Bitcoin? Well, take your Bitcoin and put it at scale with a custodian, an institutional grade custodian. You pay 10 basis points. You know, by the you know, first law of money, that means you're going to last a thousand years. The custodian might not last a thousand years, but that doesn't matter because you can move the Bitcoin every year or every decade, and you can stay one step ahead of the custodian's failing. You can't teleport a building. You can't teleport the King Ranch. You know, uh, and so Bitcoin is that is that thing that you can move. Say you custody your Bitcoin. You can self-custody your Bitcoin for about one basis point a year, assuming you buy good hardware wallets and signing devices and spend a day a year to keep track of it. Now you've got a 10,000-year asset. And what happens if you give it to the AI? Well, an AI or a computer program can maintain those private keys for the cost of electricity. You've got a 100,000-year asset. The AIs are going to want the Bitcoin. If they have a choice between owning the Bitcoin and owning the ranch in Texas or owning the bar of gold or owning the Argentine peso, it's pretty obvious what they're going to want and you can see here why they're going to want it. Digital assets are in a class all their own. When you compare them to all the other assets that you can use for capital preservation, you can see they're off the scale Everything else is living in the domain of 30, 40, 50 years, and, and you're in the domain of 1,000 to 100,000 years. It's a breakthrough in capital preservation, but it makes it a revolution in economics. If you would be, if you would be rich, trade wisely. And here's a very simple principle. Trade temporary for permanent. Trade, you know, trade your ice cream cone that's melting for the peso, the peso for the dollar, the dollar for the land, and the land for the Bitcoin. Trade the currency for capital. Trade something fragile for something resilient. Trade something local for something global. 
trade something physical for something digital, trade the security for the commodity, trade the commodity for the scarcity. You can't go wrong moving in that direction. So let's talk about some great trades in history, some trillion dollar trades. The Dutch understood naval power. They, they understood ships, they had thousands of them. They bought the best port in the New World for a couple of hundred dollars in plastic and textile trinkets. And that's worth two and a half trillion dollars today. Okay? It's, it was an investment that's returned 6% for 398 years straight. It, it's a 10.5 billion X return. And if you think about it, you're like, why, why would I actually give up the best port in America for a bunch of textiles and plastic and glass? But the people that sold the thing to them didn't understand naval power. If you don't appreciate the reason you're going to want the property, you won't value the property. Napoleon wanted to gallivant across the old world, and Jefferson wanted to expand in the new world. So France sells Louisiana to the U.S. for $15 million in 1803. The $15 million probably lasted a few months fueling the French army. It's gone. Jefferson got that. He got 27% of the United States. It's an 800,000 X return worth 12 trillion or more. It'll be worth more. Jefferson had some vision, as did this man. Seward paid $7 million for Alaska two years after the country's decimated by the Civil War. John D. Rockefeller was trying to start an oil company. Today, there's a trillion dollars of oil underneath Alaska. It's a massive return for a piece of paper. How much is digital capital worth? Take the $450 trillion, multiply by 3%. That's your entropy cost or your inflation cost. It costs the world $13.5 billion a year to take, to take all of those parade of horribles when they're trying to preserve their wealth. If you put a 20 P to E on it, like you value a company or a long duration bond, that's worth $270 trillion. So digital capital is worth 10, 20, 15 trillion a year, and it's worth hundreds of trillions of dollars. Reality check. Is he full of BS? Well, digital capital is returning 55% for the past four years. Financial capital, the best in the world, is the bond. It's minus 5%. Imagine capitalizing your company or your country on a minus 5% instead of a plus 55%. It's obviously working. Here's my macro Bitcoin forecast. It's 21 years. Goes out to the year 2045. What do I think will happen? Well, I've got a bear case and a bull case, but what I think will happen is that 55% ARR goes to 50%, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. It's between 50 and 20. It'll gradually decelerate till it's growing about twice as fast as the S&P index. And at that rate, Bitcoin's $13 million a coin in the year 2045. 13 million. It could be, it could be a 3 million bear case. It could be a 49 million bull case. But what is Bitcoin? 7% of the world's assets then. What about the rest of the assets? Well, I actually think that AIs and technology are going to revolutionize tech. We had no companies worth a trillion, and then we had a bunch of trillion dollar companies. You're going to see more because you're going to see companies with 100,000 AIs and no employees, and they're going to do the work of companies that used to have 100,000 employees. You're going to see mega corps develop, you know, shipping robots and self driving cars and a company that gives a personal physician to a billion people without any doctors on the payroll. So clearly, equity is going to grow fast. Gold's going to get demonetized. Land will be less monetized. But look, here's the future in 2045. Doesn't look that revolutionary. It looks like today. It's just that Bitcoin is visible on the chart to you. When Bitcoin is visible, that's going to be the base case. Now, what are the implications of this? How do you make money? 
Well, let's talk about individual Bitcoin strategy. What should you do? Uh, make Bitcoin your primary treasury asset. Convert your excess earnings to Bitcoin. Utilize subsidized credit. If the, if the government will loan you money, borrow the money at cheap rates and buy Bitcoin and find a tax efficient way to invest the Bitcoin. What shouldn't you do? Don't quit your day job. Don't lose your focus on Bitcoin. Don't use margin loans and trade with leverage. You get wiped out while you're asleep on a Saturday night. That's not good. Good? 30-year loan for 3% backed by the government on your land. Bad? Overnight 10x leverage. So what's a typical person? Well, we actually model an individual. And we said, what if you had 750,000 in net assets and you made 200 grand a year and you're going to make 5% more every year and you got a savings rate of 25% and you can invest 50,000 a year. Well, there's a lot of strategies. You could be the normie and do a normal strategy, diversified portfolio. You can be a 10 percenter and you can put 10% of your assets into Bitcoin. You can be a BTC maxi and put 80% of your assets and put 80% of your earnings into Bitcoin. You could be a double maxi, and that's when you basically take an extra $250,000 loan against the house. And then the triple maxi is you finance the house for Bitcoin, you buy Bitcoin, you flip all your assets to Bitcoin, and then you move to a cheap tax jurisdiction where you actually can avoid some taxes and invest an extra 50 grand in Bitcoin, maybe a Singapore or UAE or something. What's the result? Well, this is the result. The normie ends up with $8 million in 21 years. The, BT, the 10 percenter will more than double that. The maxi ends up with $100 million. The double maxi, 150. The triple maxi, 214 million. You can see the power of leverage, and the choice is yours. And you can also see, you know, it takes 15.9 Bitcoin to be a triple maxi. You know, 6.25 Bitcoin will make you a wealthy person. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Michael Saylor. If you enjoy this highlight video, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.